congratulations for showing up on the third video i am so proud of you you've inspired me and inspire each other also by commenting and let's do this let's understand more and more by research questions let's ace all ds interviews today the question that we are going to see is actually a very small variation of the last question that we did but it is actually a very very good question it can be very confusing but it will set your concepts right if you have noticed i have covered only good questions on my channel like the tough ones and i have covered this question so on the second tutorial video itself we are doing a very good question so let's get started it's a small variation but it's very interesting so in this question basically the array that is given to us can have duplicate elements also so here you can see that you have given a number 5 and it comes multiple times in this array so you have to find the first and the last occurrence of the number so you are given an array you are given the size which is 9 over here in this example okay and you are also given that okay 5 can come multiple times so you have to tell what at which index is it coming for the first time and which index is it coming for the last time so here the answer is 2 and 5 so here you can see 0 1 2 at second index it came for the first time and at fifth index it can give for the last let's try to visualize it in diagram so if we have multiple elements over here suppose 1 2 5 5 5 5 8 9 10 again the elements should be sorted if we have to use binary search right so here it is sorted now suppose this is our middle element now so if fifth itself is the middle element we can't be sure whether this is the first element last element or is it the middle element let's see from one example also now suppose here we have numbers 1 2 5 5 5 5 5 8 9 10 something okay now again the numbers should be sorted if you have to apply binary search don't forget that get your basics right remember them okay now suppose our middle element is this now we are we have to find the first and the last occurrence of 5 now 5 is there we found it but we don't know whether this is the first occurrence last occurrence or is it somewhere in middle how are we going to find that for that let's see what is the quality of the first and the last index when there is going to be a first index we have we will be sure that the element previous to it should not be the same right so we are looking for 5 we should know that the in the element at the previous index should not be 5 then we have found the first index that's that's what first means right and similarly for the last one we will be sure that the element after that is not the first index so what we are going to do in the same code that we used to do binary search to find the element we are going to make just one small tweak we are going to add this particular condition to check the previous and the next element to be sure okay that whether we are at the first or the last one so this is the code that we had written in our last video so we are just going to copy paste it and we are going to make changes to this only so here we have to return vector of integer what is that actually we have to return two values first and last so the question expects us to return vector of integer so we have to insert two values to it and if the number is not found we have to put minus 1 right so let's take two values first and last so say our first and let's put the default value as minus 1 so if it is found we will update it if it is not found we will let it be as it is and what we are going to do in the end we are going to return first and last in a vector so basically if elements will not be found minus 1 minus 1 itself will be returned and if elements are found we are going to update the values of first and last right so like this we are actually going to do two binary searches one will be for finding first and one will be for finding last here what all things we should update in our last video we had discussed that we should never write l plus h by 2 it is wrong practice it can lead to overflow so what we are going to write we are going to write l plus h minus l by 2 okay if you hadn't watched the whole video you wouldn't know this so go and watch the whole video so that you know because this is a very very important concept you can lead to overflow if you miss this see these two conditions will remain same because if you have not found the element the element will either be on the left side or it will be on the right side as we had discussed right this is the main thing that we have to see here is where the change will happen rest everything will remain same okay so here we have found the element that okay we are at the index so basically at middle point k is there but we are not sure whether that middle point is the first index or not or whether it is the last index or not so to understand this particular point let's come back to our diagram suppose your middle element was over here right so we are over here right now this is our mid now here we know that okay 5 is there right 
but we don't know whether this is the first limit or whether it is the last limit it can be the first element it can be the last element so if array of mid is equal to k we know that element is there so first and last value can exist right so first and last exist for sure if we have found the middle element to be equal right we know for sure but we are not sure whether it is the first value or if it is the last value now see the first value will either be this or it will be on the left hand side itself right similarly the last value will either be this or it will be on this side only on the right side only see again this middle element that we are at it could be the first and the last element maybe there is only one element and there are no duplicate elements so this could be the answer for first and last but it is not sure so we have to check for the rest of the array also right now we know that the first element will exist on the left side and the uh, last element will exist on the right side so that's why we have to check for both the sides see here again since this is the case of array of mid equal to k right if it is equal to k that means the element exists so we know that one possible answer is this middle value itself and here also one possible answer is this middle value itself but is this a final answer we can't be sure i will tell you again if you are confused that why we are writing this i will tell you again okay so here maybe this is our answer or if not if not first element can exist on the left side so if it can exist on the left side we have to move our higher element to mid minus 1 basically it is similar case as this because we have to move our search to the left side now see if i had not written this and i had just moved my search to the left side it is possible that this middle that we are dealing with was in fact the answer and there was no element on left now since we move to mid minus 1 our first will in the end remain as minus 1 so we have to make sure if we find a possible answer we update it right see let me explain it to you by diagram once more see here i have written the indices also suppose the middle element that we are at is over this right now after this we know that this can be the answer or we have to search on the left side maybe this is not the first element so what will we do so suppose if this is the middle element after this what do we do we will move our h to mid minus 1 which will basically be what so after that we will start searching over here and over here we will not find 5 because 5 is not there right 5 was over here only so after that we have to make sure that we update our first value also right so that is why we have to update it as soon as we go come across it it is not necessary that when we are updating the first value after that we are not going to update it suppose this was the middle value then now this can be the first value or it might not be the first value so we update the first two value to 4 and then we check in this part of array again so we become we make our h as basically mid minus 1 which will be 3 and our lower value will be 0 we will apply binary search again on this side and see whether it exists or not right similarly while finding the last value also we will either find on the right side or maybe the value that we are at could be the answer right so here if we are at 4 that can be the last value or maybe if it is not the last value then we have to search on the right side also so similarly here while finding the last element what i have to do is either this can be the answer or if it is not the answer then i have to search on the right side also to be sure that okay this is the last element or not so to move to the right side what i am going to do i am going to take my l value to mid plus 1 Okay, let's compile this. Let's run this and see whether this works or not, and then we will try run as well. Okay, one thing that I missed was that I did not reset the values of L and H. So basically, when you are restarting the binary search, earlier you started from L to from zero to n minus one, right? Similarly, for finding the last element, also it has to be from zero to n minus one. So let me know in the comments how many of you noted that I was doing this wrong. See, if I wanted, I could have actually cut this from the video, but I'm not cutting it. so that you remember that we do make such mistakes and you should not do it while in the interviews because these are the things that sets us apart that you know we think of all the cases and we keep them in mind so if i am applying binary search again i have to make sure that i am starting again from first index to the last index so we have to reset the values of l and h and this is an important point right let's compile it again so this works let's submit it now that we have passed all the cases let's quickly go through the expected time complexity it was order of log n so yeah we did binary search 
and space complexity was order of one. See, time constraint is 10 power 7. I told you till it is like 10 power 8 sort of thing, you can actually apply binary search. So for 10 power 7, you can apply binary search. Okay. Another point to note over here in interviews, when you are expected to write code, see, we have written a lot of redundant code in finding the first one and the finding the last one. The only difference is of this line, right? Whether we have to update the answer or not and whether H will be at mid minus one or L will be at mid plus one. Basically, we have to traverse on the left side or the right side. This is the only difference. So in interview, when you write code, basically you should write a helper function and you should put the entire code in one function and you should just pass a Boolean value which denotes whether you are finding the first index or the last index. So depending on that Boolean value, you can go on the left side or on the right side. Let me show you how the helper function will look. To show to you, I have written the helper function. See, writing such functions are very important because number one in interviews is going to save you a lot of time. You're going to be writing only one set of functions instead of writing two functions. So there will be no redundant code. It also shows reusability and this is something that your interviews interviewers are just going to expect you to do. So with practice, we have to improve this. And whenever there is redundant code like this, try to write code in structured form like this and it will really help you in long run. Okay. So here what I've done, see the entire function is same only just that with the parameters that were already there, I have added another boolean which tells that we are finding the first index or not. So are we finding the first index? That, that is what I have made the boolean variable to be is, is first is what we are, we are doing, right? So if we are dealing with the first one, then we have to move towards left side. Otherwise means we are finding the left side, then it means that we are going to this. And I've just stored an answer. Now this answer can be the first one or the last one, depending on this value. And we are just returning the answer. So instead of writing the code twice, what we are going to do, we are going to call this helper function, pass these values and actually just pass true and false over here. From this, what happens? The resetting of L and H also, I don't have to take care. The function itself is taking care and I won't make any problems. I hope you understood the question. I highly recommend you to take a pen and paper and do proper dry run, like take index and see. And then, you know, you will realize why for the first one we have to move towards left side and why for the last one we have to move towards right side. It always helps to dry run on paper and try writing the code yourself. Tomorrow in the next video, we will be writing very short code because we will be using C++ STL. So stay tuned. Do show up. You are doing absolutely great. We have to show up every day, at least for 50 days. Let's do this. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It will mean so much to me. Thank you. Ta-ta.